so this is GXW4501 PRI gateway it can convert E1 to SIP and SIP to E1 trunk okay now I'm unboxing this so this is the unit there are two USB ports one SD card slot for backup of configuration here you can see the indication of WAN LAN and even T1 okay this is the LCD panel for uh, information like uh, IP address MAC address and some details and this is the menu button to navigate to the menu options from LCD and this is the drop down button for options now I'm showing you back side of the device so this is the one port of E1 this is LAN port this is WAN port one reset button and one power port so you can connect the power adapter of 12 volt and it will be powered up okay and um, now there is an adapter of 12 volt inside the package one LAN cable okay now I'm connecting the power on the back side of the unit okay so this is now powering up and I'm connecting my laptop directly on the LAN port of the device here on LAN port I'm connecting my laptop okay and on WAN port we will connect the chip trunk ethernet cable so directly it will be terminated on the WAN port of this device okay and you can see here the default password and serial number on the device I'm giving you a closer look of the password so every device has a default password which is mentioned on the sticker okay so now I have done the uh, the device is powered up now and you can see here the LAN port is indication up and uh, we can show you from LCD so I'm going through the menu option here you can go to the network info to check the IP address of the device so now it is showing the LAN IP address is default IP address 192.168.2.1 okay and also you can see the default password from here as well let me check factory menu so th here is the option default password I'm clicking OK and it will show you the default password okay so we have connected the LAN and we are configuring it through the LAN so showing you the configuration from my laptop so as I already informed that the default IP address of the device is 192.168.2.1 click OK and it will ask you the username and password the username is admin and default password is which is mentioned behind the device so I have already noted and I'm pasting it okay after you enter the default password it will ask you to change the password so I'm entering a new password and confirming the same again and you have to also enter your email ID so jump immediately and again log in with the new password so this is the setup wizard you have to follow this the network method you have to select it to route only okay there are two methods one is route and one is switch the route method is your LAN port will be act as a router and switch mode will be both the LAN and WAN port will be common okay on the WAN port you have to configure your uh, Vodafone or uh, any SIP trunk provider IP address okay like I'm using here uh, 192.168.10.60 for example 
and the subnet mask and then gateway IP okay and a DNS server and its default IP address is 192.162.1 and it is giving a DSCP pool from 192.168.2.100 to 192.168.200.254 okay now going again to next page you have to next uh, set the time on next page we are setting Indian time okay and 12 hour format next you have to select the even mode the default setting is even clock slave and coding SDB3 and signaling PRAC3 in case of when you are using SIP to even you have to set the clock as master and PRI CPE to PRI net okay so this gateway will be act as a even master for EPBX analog PBX to connect the uh, even trunk okay on the next page it will ask you to configure your trunk SIP trunk we are adding SIP trunk on the after boot uh, login the device we are skipping this so this is the summary of the page when LAN IP time setting and digital hardware configuration okay now save and it is reloading the all the configurations okay after reloading you have to reboot the device okay it is now rebooted and powered up again I'm logging the device with the admin okay so this is the dashboard of the device configuration status resource uses CPU uses memory uses USB interface whether it is connected or not system status time active calls PBX uh, hardware interface USB SD card LAN connection WAN connection and digital PRI connection and it will here show you the trunk status whether it is digital means even trunk or SIP trunk so even is showing now red color it means that even is down now so going on uh, next system information system information will give you the information of the firmware version on active calls page you will see the live calls information here you will get the live calls status okay now we are going to the system setting page again to cross check whether we have uh, configured details properly or not for a uh, SIP trunk on WAN port of the device so we can clearly see that the IP address is defined over here and now we are going back to the trunk option and creating a SIP trunk so we can use as a peer SIP trunk or registered SIP trunk it is dependent upon the ISP service provider so let's say uh, if the trunk is registered so we are using as a registered SIP trunk and name we are giving uh, we are giving a uh, SIP trunk and the IP address or host name URL you can define over here like I'm using 192.168.10.50 is the SIP server or SBC IP in our condition we are just using a dummy IP you need to disable SIP, uh, keep trunk CID and here you have to define the username of the registered SIP trunk 123456 password 1234 and authentication ID will be same as username so I'm using 123456 click save after saving it you need to edit this trunk and go to advanced setting and you need to enable heartbeat detection if you will not enable this the trunk will not be up and it will show you unreachable so it is mandatory to enable heartbeat detection and you have to select the DID mode to to header and send PPI header should be enabled depending upon your requirement or your service provider configuration we can either use PPI header or PAI header okay let's say I'm using your PAI header and save so this is the trunk setting we have created after trunk creation you have to check the status of the trunk under system status dashboard 
and we will check the status whether it is registered or not if it is blue color it is registered if it not or red color it is unregistered okay now going to next to the outbound and inbound route let's say there is a ship to even con concept so we are getting incoming call from ship trunk and we have to send it to even port so we are creating an inbound rule for uh, ship trunk add and we are giving inbound number of the trunk let's say example it's one two three four five six click save and after that you have to add a route to send it to the even trunk so i am giving name of the trunk for identification ship to even and pattern will be same as inbound route pattern one two three four five six and the trunk where call will be sent is pri trunk digital so call comes from ship trunk and sent to pri digital trunk okay so this is the incoming now we are creating a rule for outgoing from e1 to ship so we have to select digital trunk for incoming click add give pattern uh, x dot x means 0 to 9 0 to 9 any digit and dot means wildcard matching one or more characters okay so a uh, customer can dial any number either mobile number or uh, landline number through this pattern so i'm clicking save and you have to click uh, click on the outbound route to create outbound route to access the ship trunk for outgoing call i'm giving name incoming from e1 trunk okay and the pattern will be same x dot and you have to select the trunk for outgoing ship trunk so this is the simple setup you have to done ship to even and even to ship okay and if there is any call you can see on active calls page if there is any active calls okay and you can also check the cdr status of calls after call completion you can see the cdr call detail reports call from which extension or which number to uh, external number and what is the start time what is the talk time and what is the total call time okay so this is the configuration and overview and unboxing of the GXW4501.